Pat, what'd you think? Apple event, iPhone 13, watch, pot, pad, go. So overall, uh, I was unimpressed with the level of innovation that had had come out. And, and I say that, you know, and Daniel, you, you always reinforce this, that it doesn't mean we don't buy the products, that we don't <laughs> respect uh, the stock, right? I mean, I, I carry two phones. I carry a, a Samsung either Fold or S20 uh, Plus uh, for my real phone. And then my iMessage phone is a mini. Why? Because my family won't use anything other than iMessage. But low on the innovation curve, uh, low on surprises. And here's what's different. And this is not just me. I, I admire Apple for a lot of things. But And one thing about their events, they'll always come out with something different and unique to get you thinking about something. And whether that's a service or thought leadership or a product, and I'm not talking about and yet another thing or just another thing uh, at the very end of these things or, or whatever Tim and Steve says. It, it's about uh, making you think a little bit differently. Oh my gosh, I just said that. And this event had none of that, even though we had new iPhones, new iPads, uh, and and a new uh, a new watch. There was really nothing that was there. Um, a couple things that that I was impressed by. Uh, first of all, the A15 Bionic uh, is is just yet another iteration of Apple running up the score, at least on CPU performance. Uh, we'll talk about uh, 5G uh, performance a little bit later, but. Well, we can talk about that now. Uh, Apple phones have the slowest uh, performance of, of any smartphones here in the U.S. And part of that is because they, they have a DIY RF solution and the rest of the industry <laughs> uses a Qualcomm uh, RF solution. Uh, on iPads, nothing really to write home about a new version. By the way, I got excited about the iPad mini. Uh, it makes a great coffee table uh, device to change channels uh, on your on your TV and do do some uh, light uh, snacking. Does that change anything in the education market? Does it push on PCs? Absolutely not. It's still too expensive even compared with a Chromebook. Because let's not forget, you have to add a keyboard to that iPad when you're in education. And what are you looking at? A hundred, two hundred bucks for the keyboard? Um, so not affordable. Um, Apple Watch. I am an Apple Watch user. Why? Because it happens to be the best watch currently for health. If Samsung can get blood pressure uh, approved here in the United States, I'm going to go to Samsung. Uh, what did they do? They made the display bigger in the Series 7, added some interesting algorithms, but really nothing to get too excited about. Bigger display is better. It's 20%, but... Uh, I don't think it's going to motivate uh, that many people. I want Apple to add uh, a blood pressure sensor to this thing. And it's like, you got me. Uh, take take my money, okay? Uh, does this matter to in the big picture? I don't think it matters in the U.S. Now, I do believe and I do know that Samsung is taking a little bit of share away from Apple with its flip and its fold. Uh, particularly with the flip, uh, and we will see probably next quarter how much uh, share Samsung actually took. Samsung's biggest challenge is that it can't supply the goods. I mean, T-Mobile uh, did their big um, promotion, not with Samsung like they normally do, but they did it with Apple, with the iPhone 13, and basically threw a shot out at Samsung that they couldn't, uh, couldn't supply uh, enough phones. So, Maybe they didn't take share because they just couldn't uh, meet that supply. So net-net, uh, low innovation. I don't think it matters in the U.S. I do think it matters outside the U.S. where there's not an iMessage lock-in. Just to give you a comparison, Apple has about 50% market share in the U.S. and in the rest of the world, about 20% uh, percent, uh, out there. So anyways. Yeah, 22% global, uh, you know, a lot of great points. Like I said, definitely check out our special episode on the call-ins. 
Um, but we did put it out on all of our big channels. So it's out on Spotify, Apple. We did dig, dig a little bit deeper into this. Pat, I was asleep uh, by the second set of announcements. It's like I said, it's iterative. It's all fine. It's fine. It's it's good. It's whatever. You know, sleeker bezel. Okay. You know, if you give me a magnifying glass, I might notice that. Uh, I love um, edge to edge comments on devices that clearly weren't edge to edge. I don't understand what defines edge to edge if there's like a full centimeter of bezel around the outside of it. Um, the cinematography was cool. I, I do like that as someone who's now put a very expensive DSLR in my studio. I looked at that and I'm like, isn't that exactly what I'm doing with my really expensive DSLR? But again, a really expensive DSLR is <laughs> still cheaper than a loaded up iPhone. So, um, you know, you, you got to make that decision as well. Pat, I'm actually more excited about the services, the TV, the, um, the you know, the music as some of the things that are part of their platform ecosystem that I have been with the last several launches. So I don't have much more to say. I'm bored. Uh, you know, Apple, I'm bored. I'm <laughs> bored. Um, and I expect you to entertain me. So, you know, I feel like the, you know, this is the moment I'm in the arena, I'm throwing the sword up to the office of Tim Cook and I'm saying, I'm not entertained. <laughs> and so I'm not entertained, but you know what? To your credit, you will sell a ton. You will return to shareholders. You will do buybacks. You will make the market happy. And most people are um, pretty unaware of what innovation really does look like and what the cutting edge tech means. And sometimes it's just because what is actually the best, fastest and most capable isn't necessary. And I think Apple really constantly sort of straddles that fence of how necessary are some of these next generation technologies. Yeah. 